Hi, I'm PJ Matavish. Welcome back to another DC tutorial. In this one, we're going to do the surface jumpy question from 2013. So I'm not going to read you the question as I said before, and we'll just get straight into it. So the first part is to draw the given plan of the diamond, all right? That's part one of A. And then we'll do the second part. So you have all the measurements there for the plan, and there's an enlarged scale of 10 is to 1. So everything must be multiplied by 10. So your 2.5 becomes 25 and so on. So we're going to put in the plan and I'll fast forward through this. Okay, so that is the plan done. That is A part one done. And the next part of it is part two. It says surfaces A and C on the top of the diamond have a pitch of 45 degrees. Draw the elevation of the top portion of the diamond surfaces B, C, and E. So they only want the top portion, all right? So if you look at the drawing, it tells you that uh, the top surface is a, a 10 mil above the XY line, okay? In this case, you're gonna multiply that by 10, so it's gonna be 100 mil. So it's quite a large drawing and surfaces A and C are inclined to 45 degrees. So you can get the edge view of A and draw that down. You can project it up from the plan, see where the edge is, and you should be able to straightforwardly enough put in the elevation of that. So I'm gonna fast forward through this now and put this in as up. Okay, so that is the second part of A done. So it only asks for the elevation of the surfaces B, C, D. Okay, so don't worry about the plan yet. So part B then is determine the hedral angle between the surfaces A and B. So if you look at the elevation, surface A is an edge view here, and that is our line of intersection, which is represented by this line here. But neither of them are parallel to the XY line in either of the views. Okay, so even though it's an edge view of A, it's not a true length of the line section, so therefore we can't do a point view. So what we need to do is do a uh, perpendicular auxiliary view to the line section first, get a true length of that, and then get our dehedral angle. So I'm going to project up here to the top left. You're projecting the plan, so it's an auxiliary elevation, so get your heights from the X, Y line up. In this case, we're getting surface A and B, so I'm going to put in that in line right in underneath here, so that it will save me loads of room. Okay, so do an auxiliary elevation, and I'll fast forward through this. Okay, so this is given as a true length of the two fights. So I'll just put in a small bit of label in there in lightly, and you can see better here. So this now is a true length. And if that line section is a true length, if we do a point view of that line, we'll see the two surfaces, the edges, and then you'll be able to get your dehedral angle. So this time you're projecting from this auxiliary view, therefore you have to get your height from the X1, Y1 back to plan. And again, I'm going to move that back to get that in line to make it. Um, same bit of room. Okay, so I uh, fast forward to this now as well.
Okay, so that is your dihedral angle. So, firstly, we found a true length of the line section, which was these points two and five, this line here between the two surfaces. And then you projected a point view of that line section to give you an edge view of surfaces A and B to find your dihedral angle. So that was part uh, B done. Part C now, all the sloping edges of the underside of the diamond have a true length of 90 or 9.5 millimeters. And when it's scaled up, which is uh, 95 millimeters, complete the elevation of the diamond as shown. So first things first, we know that they are all meeting at our center point here. So we project up our center point, back up to the elevation. Take one of our edges here, as I say, example, this line here, from here to here. What we're going to do is we're going to rotate it down so that it's parallel to the XY line. So that in the elevation we're looking at it straight on, and it's going to be a true length. So we'll project that back down and project it up. If it's a true length, if it's parallel to the XY line here in plan, it'll be true length in elevation. So that means we can find where it came from. So we're going to go with this one here, so that point there. Draw an arc of 95 mil, which is our true length and that will give us the true position. So we'll do that first. We'll rotate this one down. Now project that back up to the elevation. So somewhere along this line will give us a true position of that base point here. So it's coming from this edge here. And you know the true length is 95 mil. So if we draw a true length, from our corner here to cut through our true position here. I'll just draw that in with blue here so it stands out. Now, if it was parallel to the XY line and not in the center here, that would be our true length, okay? But what we did was we rotated, uh, rotate, rotated it into this true length position. And in order to rotate it back, it's still gonna be the same height, you're just moving the plane back. The height of this point is gonna be the true height, okay? The heights are gonna remain the same. So if we project this height back over to its original position, which was on this line here, it will give us the base point there and we can finish off the elevation. So that's part C done. Now, for part D of this uh, surface jump question, is asking to determine the hydro angle between surfaces D and F. So, as you see here, this is D and F in the elevation, and there's our line of intersection between the two. So, we'll look down here, and your line of intersection isn't um, a true length in plan or elevation. So, again, we're going to, like previous part here, we're going to do two auxiliary views. So, to find surface D, it's underneath surface C here going right to the point. So this is surface D underneath, and this sliver here is surface F, and that is our line intersection. So we'll project an auxiliary view, an auxiliary elevation from our line section up here to the right hand side, because we have plenty of room there. And we'll put an X1, Y1, and get our heights from the elevation. Again, you put in the datum line right at the point here, just save a bit of room. Now that's our second auxiliary, or first auxiliary view done. And your line section was this point here, back down to the base there. So this now is the true length. And the hidden detail line there is just representing surface F at the back. So this front surface here is for surface D, and surface F is at the back. Now you have a true length, just like the last one, do point view up there of the line section. And this time you're getting your height from the X1 line went back. Again, put in the datum line. I'll probably end up going off the sheet, but I'll uh, fast forward through this and add on the next sheet and so on.
So as you can see, I just added a bit of tape so you can see my strong line here. So that represents surface D. This is the edge view surface F, and that's giving you your adhesion angle in between the two. So that was the question done now. Uh, as you can see here, this is a request. Now, I don't think I'll get a chance to do a few more surface geometry questions, but there's three up on the site now, so I hope that's uh, enough of a help. And as always, if there's any questions you'd like to see done specifically, just let me know. And other than that, we'll see you in the next one.